Hey, yeah, exciting news. We're in the tournament. What tournament? Torn tournament? Tau Is there an O in that word? It's T U R N A M I N T. Tournament. 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 No. <laughs> yeah, we're in the round of 32. We've made it to the round of 32. If you lose at this point, you're done. As a newbie to BattleBots, I was really excited to have a chance to experience this. Also excited and eager to learn. So I asked my teammates what was heading our way and what everyone was working on to prepare us. First up, Rudy, the bracket, metalwork, and birthday cake? So Very exciting, number three seed, went three and one. We lost to uh, Minotaur, but only just. But now, um, looking at the brackets, first fight's gonna be against Jackpot, which is a pretty high energy vert. And then just looking beyond it, like if we beat Jackpot, and if Bloodsport wins their fight, we could fight them in the second round, and they're a uh, big hitting horizontal. And as you know, the horizontal wedge got destroyed in our fight against Fusion. So uh, we're working to scrap another one of those horizontal wedges back together. At this point, we're just trying to keep things going and make sure the motors don't blow up. What's on your plate, Rudy? I gotta prep the metal for the front wedge. The steel, so it gets water jetted and bent. And the raw metal has the thing that's called mill scale on it, which is a coating they put on at the mill where they make the steel. Plus there's rust on it because it was water jetted. So to clean all that off so we can get a good solid penetrating weld and then also the paint to stick to it. What else is on your plate for today? Because there's a lot. Everybody has a lot to do, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of taking a task at a time. Sometimes your task is to eat some of Will Bale's birthday cake. That's a tire you're allowed to wreck. <laughs> I want to see if this is like BF Goodrich or, you know. Goodyear? What kind of, what kind of tire? That goes in there, and that's what supports this. Oh, those two, these are two parts of one assembly. Yeah. Yeah, so this goes in there. Got a slotty magoo. And then gets welded in there. So do you, this side gets welded first, yeah? I have no idea, that's why Mike's in charge. I just grind it. There always seems to be some sort of work that has to be done to prepare motors for our matches. This time though, it seems like really consuming work. What we're working on is uh, battle hardening our weapon motors. We battle hardened our drivetrain motors in previous years, and we're trying out different techniques for these brushless motors. And battle hardening is really just a term, a blanket term that covers anything you do to modify electronics to make it survive. What what goes on in the bot battle box. This is a, a certain two-part epoxy we, like I said, use, have used over the last few years. Okay. And then we were just trying a different application technique because this can geometry is a little different than the mag motors we've been using. Trying to fill that airspace with something that's pretty hard that shouldn't change the weight of the motor too much. So to help keep it balanced, we have this jig set up to keep the motor rolling around so we don't get too much epoxy showing up at one spot or dripping. So it's not at all like a, a silicone type of epoxy where it's flexible. It's specifically No, it's a hard tough... and it's pretty hard to sand off if you mess it up. So <laughs> you want to get it right in where you need it. But no pressure. Yeah, but no pressure. You got, I think it's 90 minutes is the open time. Yeah. So you two are taking turns spinning the motor to ensure the epoxy stays right where you put it. Yep, <laughs> trying to make it look like a machine put it in and then replicate that for the rest of our weapon motors. We don't want to add a new variable into the mix that negatively affects us. We're low on spare parts, so we're trying to figure out how can we prevent losing a motor every match right now. So does that mean we've gone through three weapon brushless motors at this point? I think so. The number's close to that. So we're trying something different, so we should get something different. It's not all physical work though. Curtis has some information on strategy planning and the current vibe and feel around the team. So is this a, a stressy time or is it like a happy time? Well, there's like, yay, tournament. And then there's, uh, oh, fix the robot, get it ready. But they're both actually, like the two chassis are in a pretty good place right now. I think we can have both ready today and then wait for the fight. 
that's the part we don't like is when you don't know when you're fighting and it might be eight hours from now and you're just sitting around and kind of thinking of what could go wrong. <laughs> that's, that's always healthy. Did I tighten every bolt? Yeah. That's why you always tighten every bolt. <laughs> As if it's the last time it's going in. I'm looking through the fights of our opponent to see if there's any info we can glean on, you know, driving strategies, what they like to do. Do they box rush every time? Do they sit in the middle and turn at you? Do they chase? Uh, anything that can kind of give like a advantage if we can so or far at least a standard a fairly informed strategy yeah yeah like you know if you can expect uh something out of them and you see it then you might know what they're going to do next too i didn't get a chance to grab um video of what you were doing earlier you took the self rider that was bent from the minotaur fight and got it back into working shape and now rudy's doing something to it so what i'm just i'm cleaning the paint off so it can get rewelded. Basically, this side was bent up, like peeled up. And so it had to be bent back in place in order to be, it would have been use, usable and useful, but really you want it flat because if it peels up too much, one, it's a larger target, and two, it won't self ride us the same. It'll peel off, like we'll get to a certain point and then we'll hit that bent part and it'll just kind of flip under us. So it may not be as efficient or as effective. It makes our self right unpredictable, right? Like that. Yeah, it'll also issue. throw us off instead of going straight over ourselves. It could shoot us off to the side a little bit. Actually, all the welds look like they're cracked. So it wasn't just bending it back into as straight as it could be. There's rework in addition that has to happen. Yeah, it needs to be rewelded probably across the board, all three joints in order to make sure that it's good and strong. So the two components that are in line with the sprocket are parallel. Are those kind of the main pieces and then the perpendicular components are secondary? I mean, if you don't have the perpendicular components, then the whole thing won't stay together. It works as a system. You have to have at least all three, which is why when you look at something like uh, ghost ribs, we have still have the horizontal, which is required. And we have the two parts connecting everything. We could get away with this. We'd rather have this is obviously more armor. Just gives us a probably better dynamics and flipping. So is welding the last step for repairing the self rider? Oh, then we probably have to paint it. Maybe. Throw it back on the robot, make sure that it's not bent and out of line so it'll be true. Well, it's better than the 45 that it was. <laughs> so you spent some time earlier doing that. What else is on Paul's plate? So the biggest thing I get to do right now is build up a new weapon Probably build up the second weapon, which is the one we only have two more hubs left. Probably take apart the weapon from that match, potentially, and get it ready because we do have an extra disc. We just don't have extra hubs, which if one of the damaged hubs is one of the ones that goes on all the weapons, I may have to grind the weapon to get it on a different hub. So we expected to lose some of the discs to a degree, just not the hubs. Yeah, we pretty much always expect to lose weapons. Uh, It'll either be the bearings inside explode, which we can replace the bearings. It's just way more time consuming. So having another weapon all built up already so you can swap it in. Yeah, when possible. Okay, awesome. I'll go put uh, Paul's nap on the checklist. It's thoroughly amusing that you're doing a very, you know, easy to destroy, delicate process of tapping a large hole. And Paul is behind you, Smack. smacking around like Hulk. Two different tasks. Paul smash! Everyone seemed to just kind of fit into place and work on what needed to be done. Nice. Nice. Nice, nice. Everyone jumped on to the next task, and after not too terribly long, we had some robots who were just about ready for combat. It's a repair job. <laughs> cool. Normal size, extra beef. After all of that labor and a good night's rest, we completed our final steps for battle. I feel like we went from everything's fine to everything's urgent. Uh, well, I guess we're gonna be the third fight. 
so we have to get ready to go. Students are ready to call us, but I think we were switching to thicker ribs. When did we find out? When did we find out we were in that match? Like a minute uh, ago? About two seconds ago. So uh, we wanted to change out the ribs. We're doing that now. We're going to get on the scale. We're going to get ready to go. So is this our twitch test for our first match of the 32? Yes, it is. Woo! <laughs> Big step. After getting ready, we walked to our fight. And what a fight it was. A lengthy match that turned out to be a humongous slugfest led to a very interesting and entertaining cool down with Jackpot. This is my first year out here and one of the things that I've learned is you gotta have fun. If you, if you don't force yourself to take the time to have fun, then it gets really hard. I'm like, well, you know what? If you don't have fun with it, you're just going to go home crying about it. So, you learn from losses and you build back better. You guys chewed us up. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> These are our tactics. Self works. Oh, though. that's cool. Yeah. It didn't catch on fire either, which is a big deal. That's what I was expecting. I was like, it's yeah. gonna be a life of fire. I wasn't that's sure good, how so. many hits you guys were gonna take. It's like Are all the battery packs still good? No. No. Oh, no. <laughs> the, the, the side is crushed. Oh, okay. The battery didn't get hit, they just got squished. No, that's what I was saying with the battery packs. They're compact so now. Yeah. A victory for us. And also, Lockjaw won their match. That means we face one of the longest standing BattleBots teams for the first time ever in our next match. See how we do against this veteran team next time on Pit Pass. Well, that's the end of another exciting episode. Make sure you tune in next week. Make sure you comment if you want to get some of the cool merch. Check out our store. And uh, see you next week. Bye. Woo! All right. <laughs>